The president of Mexico, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, known as AMLO, is one of the most popular leaders on earth. And as he is finishing the final year of his six year term, he has an 80% approval rating. This is despite the fact that the corporate media has spent years lying about him, viciously attacking him, and the US government has constantly meddled in Mexico's internal affairs. The US government has funded opposition groups and has funded media outlets, which have constantly attacked AMLO, lying about him. And despite all of this, AMLO remains one of the most popular leaders on earth. This was revealed in a poll that was published this May by a US polling firm called Gallup. The polling firm surveyed Mexicans and found that 80% support AMLO. This is an increase from 67% in 2022. Gallup pointed out that this makes AMLO one of the most well-liked leaders in the world. And ever since Gallup began surveying Mexicans in 2006, no other Mexican politician has ever been as popular as Lopez Obrador or AMLO. This is deeply ironic because the US government and the media outlets and opposition groups that it funds have claimed for years that AMLO is supposedly threatening Mexico's democracy. The National Endowment for Democracy, the NED, is a US government organization. It's basically a cutout of the CIA that was created supposedly to promote democracy in scare quotes, but in reality, it is used by Washington in order to meddle in the internal affairs of other countries. In the name of promoting democracy, it actually undermines democracy in order to support the interests of the US government and US corporations. And the NED published an article back in 2023 claiming how AMLO's strong man act is weakening Mexico. The media in Mexico has been spreading this ridiculous lie as well for years. Right-wing media outlets have said that AMLO is trying to install an authoritarian system. Right-wing elites in Mexico have been publishing articles in Spanish and the Washington Post and other US media outlets claiming that Mexico is returning to the authoritarian era of the pre. In 2020, the editorial board of the Financial Times, the major British newspaper, published an article titled Lopez Obrador becomes Latin America's new strongman. The Mexican leader is revealing himself as an authoritarian populist. When they published this article, AMLO had about 67% support. Since then, it has increased to 80%. And why is AMLO so popular? It's very easy to explain. He is the first left-wing leader in decades in Mexico. He has significantly raised the minimum wage. He has reduced poverty. The economy has been growing significantly, and there are a lot of in good industrial jobs coming to Mexico. Furthermore, he has been completely independent. He's basically the first Mexican leader in decades who's not a puppet of the United States. He has repeatedly criticized the US for meddling in Mexico's internal affairs, for violating Mexican sovereignty. He has given powerful speeches telling the US, we are not a colony. We are not a protectorate of the US. Here is a clip of an incredible speech that AMLO gave in 2023 when he held a huge rally condemning the US because many Republican politicians, including Donald Trump and his allies, have been threatening to invade Mexico. This was his powerful response, saying we are not a colony. Pero lo más importante es que desde aquí, desde este Zócalo, corazón político y cultural de México, le recordamos a esos políticos hipócritas e irresponsables que México es un país independiente y libre, no una colonia ni un protectorado de Estados Unidos.
AMLO has also reasserted sovereign control over Mexico's natural resources. Oil in Mexico had been nationalized as part of the Mexican Revolution going back to 1910 and the, the progressive constitution that was created. But the neoliberal right wing U.S. backed leaders who governed Mexico in recent years before AMLO, they were gradually trying to privatize the oil in Mexico. When AMLO came back, he promised that he was going to undo the neoliberal free market fundamentalist policies. He renationalized oil and under AMLO, Mexico nationalized its lithium, the new white gold that is needed for the green energy transition. Y recientemente se nacionalizó el litio, mineral estratégico utilizado en la construcción de baterías para autos eléctricos y sistema de almacenamiento para las energías limpias. Me llena de orgullo poder recordar justicia social, igualdad, soberanía, viva la expropiación petrolera. Vivan los trabajadores y técnicos de antes y de ahora de la industria petrolera nacional. So he's a left wing nationalist who has been reasserting control over Mexico's natural resources, defending Mexico's sovereignty and the minimum wage has increased. Living standards have increased. Social programs have increased. It's very easy to explain why. He's popular, but precisely because he is independent. He is not a U.S. puppet. That's why the U.S. government and media outlets in the U.S. and oligarch owned right wing media outlets in Mexico, they have spread this false narrative claiming that he's authoritarian, despite the fact that he has 80 percent support because the U.S. cannot control him and the right wing capitalist oligarchs in Mexico cannot control him. The Council on Foreign Relations, which is one of the most powerful think tanks in the U.S., closely linked to the U.S. State Department and also to Wall Street. The Council on Foreign Relations has also spread these lies, claiming that Mexico's democracy is crumbling under AMLO. The media arm of the Council on Foreign Relations is Foreign Affairs magazine. This is one of the most well-respected media outlets in the U.S. And it has repeatedly published articles by right wing oligarchs, elites in Mexico who hate AMLO, like, for instance, Denise Dresser. And she published an article in Foreign Affairs claiming that Mexico's democracy is dying because of the authoritarian populism of AMLO. In an article this May, she published another article in Foreign Affairs claiming that people in Mexico are voting for autocracy because AMLO has undermined democracy and brought back party dominance. What these U.S. media outlets and oligarchs are trying to do is blatantly meddle in Mexico's internal affairs in the lead up to the election, which is on the 2nd of June. And every single poll has shown that AMLO's political ally, Claudia Sheinbaum, who is the former governor of Mexico City, and she is from the same left wing party of President López Obrador, which is called Morena. And all of the polls show that Claudia Sheinbaum will easily win the election in a massive landslide. Every poll shows her at 53 percent support or some even more, whereas the second place candidate who represents the oligarchy, the right wing in Mexico, all of the different neoliberal parties combined together, including the PAN, the PRI, even the former Social Democratic Party, the PRD, that became a right wing party. All of the right wing combined together behind the candidate Xochitl Galvez, and she still only has 30 percent support, despite the fact that all of the major media outlets support her, which all are owned by the oligarchs. All of the major right wing parties are behind her. The U.S. government is behind her. And yet, clearly, the Mexican people support the left wing Morena party of AMLO and the candidate Claudia Sheinbaum, who, by the way, is a scientist with a Ph.D. in energy engineering. She's an expert on climate change 
and sustainable development. Again, she was the governor of Mexico City. So this is what actual democracy looks like. But instead, the U.S. government has been spreading this false narrative that supposedly AMLO is threatening democracy. In fact, just a few days before the election, on the 31st of May, the Washington think tank CSIS, CSIS, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, which is a neoconservative think tank funded by the U.S. government, funded by U.S. allies, funded by the weapons industry, the military industrial complex, CSIS published this ridiculous report titled An Uncertain Future, Democratic Backsliding Through Executive Aggrandizement Under AMLO. So the U.S. government and the media outlets it funds and the think tanks it funds have been spreading this narrative that AMLO is supposedly threatening democracy. But in reality, polls of actual people in Mexico show the exact opposite. AMLO is the most popular leader in modern history in Mexico with 80% approval. And I want to go back briefly to this poll that was published by Gallup because it showed that under President AMLO, who entered office in 2018, there, the presidential terms in Mexico are six years, what we've seen is the exact opposite of democratic backsliding. Instead, Mexico has become more democratic. Under President AMLO, we've seen that Mexicans now 53% approve of their leadership and 61% and have confidence in their national government. When Lopez Obrador came to power in 2018, only 29% had faith in their national government. That is to say that confidence in the government in Mexico has doubled under President AMLO. And you know what confidence in the U.S. government is? 30%. And yet the U.S. government claims to be the beacon of democracy and claims that Mexico supposedly is undergoing democratic backsliding. But quite literally, it is the exact opposite. Mexico is becoming more democratic under AMLO and the left-wing Morena party, whereas the U.S. is becoming less democratic. According to the latest polls, what is Joe Biden's approval? 39%. Only 39% of people in the U.S. support Joe Biden. AMLO is literally twice as popular as Biden. Meanwhile, 56% of North Americans disapprove of Biden. And what was Donald Trump's approval in his last year in office in 2020? It, right now, it's June 2024. Well, four years ago, in June 2020, Donald Trump's approval rating was 38%. His disapproval rating was 57%. Basically, exactly the same as Biden. So AMLO is twice as popular as Trump was at this point in his presidency and as Biden is. And yet U.S. government funded think tanks in Washington, like the Wilson Center, another one of these neoconservative groups. They have also published these articles complaining about so-called democratic backsliding in Mexico, lessons for opponents of authoritarian populism. Apparently authoritarian populism is when President AMLO has 80% approval. Now, earlier I explained why AMLO is so popular, and I mentioned that one of the reasons is simply because he has significantly helped poor people, and his famous slogan is, first the poor, primero los pobres. He's always tried to raise the living standards of working class people in Mexico. I want to look at some of the data here because it speaks for itself. The change in the real minimum wage in Mexico under President AMLO, it has increased by 84% between 2018 and 2023. The minimum wage in Mexico has increased more than any other country in Latin America by far, 84%. However, that was just the minimum wage. Let's also look at the data on per capita real labor income. So this is per capita. So this is all of the labor income of the country divided by the population per person. And you can see that in 2018, when AMLO came into office, the per capita real labor income was about 2,500 Mexican pesos per trimester. 
and that has massively increased. It had been stagnant for a decade. In fact, some years it decreased, especially in the neoliberal right-wing governments. And then when AMLO came in, it significantly started increasing. It did fall during the pandemic, but after 2020, it increased and then significantly after recovering, it significantly increased further and is now at around 3,150, 3,200 Mexican pesos per trimester. So this is a significant increase for the average worker in Mexico. And by the way, this is the real increase. It takes into account inflation. So it's not that all of this is because inflation has been high in recent years. These are real increases in per capita labor income. At the same time, there has also been a significant decrease in poverty in Mexico. Now, for decades, poverty has been a very serious systemic problem in Mexico. So the, the numbers are still high, but they've dropped dramatically. In 2018, when AMLO came in, the poverty rate was 50%, half the population. And then because of the pandemic, that figure increased to 53%. But from the end of the pandemic until 2022, it fell by 10 points and is now at 44%. And the extreme poverty rate has fallen from 17% during the pandemic to 12% as of 2022. And this is data from two years ago. The number has continued decreasing since then. So obviously poverty is still a very real concern in Mexico. And this is why in the election, it is basically guaranteed that the left-wing candidate Claudia Scheinbaum will win. All of the polls show her with 53% support. She is from the same left-wing party as AMLO Morena, and she has pledged to continue AMLO's campaign of fighting poverty and reducing inequality. And going back to the Gallup poll with which I began this analysis today, it also asked Mexicans what they feel about the future of their economy. And for the first time ever since Gallup started studying Mexico's economy and, and interviewing Mexicans, for the first time, a majority of people in Mexico are optimistic about the future of their economy. 73% say that their living standards are getting better. Three quarters of Mexicans say their living standards are getting better. 57%, a slight majority, say that the local economy is getting better. This is higher than Gallup has ever seen in its polls. For the first time on record, 55% of Mexicans have confidence in Mexico's financial institutions and banks. And the poll noted that in Mexico, people feel more positive about their economic future in 2023 than almost any other advanced economy, including the US, where people are rightfully very pessimistic about their economic future. In fact, in the US, it's the polar inversion of what's happening in Mexico. According to Gallup, 70% of people in the US say the economy is getting worse. Only 26% say the economy is getting better. So quite literally in Mexico, twice as many people think the economy is getting better in Mexico than in the US. Just as AMLO is twice as popular as Biden is or as Trump was in his same time in the, his presidential administration. So this is scientific proof looking at polling done by a US polling firm. This is not done by a Mexican polling firm that is linked to President AMLO and his left-wing Morena party. This is according to scientific polling done by Gallup, the leading US firm. And they acknowledge that Mexico is twice as democratic as the US and twice as many people in Mexico are optimistic about their economy as in the US. So the conclusion here is that Mexico its system, despite the many problems that do exist, the violence, the poverty that still exists, despite all of that, Mexico's system is working better for the people of Mexico than it is for the US. And it's genuinely more democratic, despite the fact that the US government has spent years and millions of dollars trying to convince people that Mexico is supposedly becoming authoritarian, 
under the left wing socialist populist AMLO who's going to be the new Venezuela and he's going to be the next Hugo Chavez. In fact, ironically, President AMLO himself has called out the U.S. for this double standard. The U.S. State Department has repeatedly meddled in Mexico's internal affairs, claiming that AMLO is supposedly undermining democracy. And AMLO responded by condemning the U.S. and saying that Mexico is more democratic than the U.S. and saying the U.S. is an oligarchy. And of course, the polling shows that he's correct. In fact, when the Biden administration held a so-called summit for democracy last year, AMLO called out the U.S. directly to its face, saying that it's an oligarchy posing as a democracy. Repeatedly during his term, AMLO has sent letters to the U.S. criticizing it for funding right-wing opposition groups who have been protesting Mexico's elected government and trying to destabilize it. AMLO has also been very outspoken in support of Julian Assange, the journalist and political prisoner whom the U.S. is trying to throw in prison for the rest of his life for the so-called crime of doing journalism. AMLO referred to Julian Assange as a prisoner of conscience and, quote, the best journalist of our time. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the main reasons that the U.S. government and corporate media outlets have spread these lies claiming that AMLO is authoritarian and undermining democracy is because he's not a U.S. puppet. On the contrary, AMLO has had an independent foreign policy and he has been supportive of Cuba, condemning the illegal U.S. blockade of Cuba and condemning neoliberal orthodoxy that right-wing economists have tried to force down the throats of developing countries for decades. Back in 2022, AMLO denounced the illegal U.S. blockade of Cuba as, quote, a tremendous violation of human rights. He has been very outspoken on this issue, which has angered the imperial overlords in Washington. So this is the reality of what's happening in Mexico. AMLO is one of the most popular leaders in the world. Do not believe this nonsense propaganda you see in the Western media. And now you can understand why the U.S. government and right-wing oligarchs in Mexico have been spreading this narrative. And you can understand why Claudia Scheinbaum is going to win the election and be the first ever female president in Mexico and a left-wing president who will continue many of these policies of nationalizing the natural resources, increasing the minimum wage, raising living standards, and resisting the oligarchy in Mexico whose loyalties are not to the Mexican people, certainly not to the Mexican working class. Their loyalties are to the U.S., the U.S. empire, and Wall Street. On that note, I'm going to conclude here. I'm Ben Norton. I'm the editor-in-chief of Geopolitical Economy Report. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Please like and subscribe. Please share, and I will see you all next time.